This is All India Radio. Good evening and welcome to this edition of Market Mantra in which we give you a complete update on the economic, business and stock market news of the day. I am Gaurav Dhawan Lal and with me is my co-anchor in Hindi, Nikhil Kumar. Namaskar, Market Mantra mein aap sabhi ka swagat hai. Roz ki tarhe aaj bhi hum desh aur dunia se aarthik, vyaparik, tatha share bazaar ke taza samachar aap ke liye lekar aayin. On par hum charcha karenge. Charcha ke liye aaj studio mein aamantrit hai aarthik vishishegye Udhyan Re. Udhyan ji karke mein aapka bahut bahut swagat hai. Dhanne wad Nikhil ji. Aur sab se pehle headlines ke saath mein hai Gaurav. Thank you, Nikhil, and welcome, Odeon, to the program. Thank you. A quick look at the headlines. Domestic stocks witness modest gains amid mixed global queues. Sensex finishes near 61,300 points. Nifty settles above the 18,200 mark. Gold rises above 55,500 rupees per 10 gram mark for February contracts. Silver hits 70,700 per kilogram level for March contracts at the NCX. And Brent crude slips below $85 per barrel amid lower demand prospects. वैश्विक शेयर बाजार के मिले-जुले रुख के चलते घरेलू कारोबार में मामूली बढ़त बॉम्बे स्टॉक एक्सचेंज का सेंसेक्स 61,300 के आसपास और निफ्टी 18,200 से ऊपर जाकर बंद हुआ मल्टी कमोडिटी एक्सचेंज में फरवरी के वादा कारोबार में सोना महंगा होकर 55,500 रुपए प्रति 10 ग्राम और मार्च अनुबंध वाली चांदी 70,700 रुपए प्रति किलो और ब्रांड कच्चे तेल की कीमत 85 डॉलर प्रति बैरल से नीचे और शुरुआत करते हैं आज की प्रमुख खबरों की सेंसेक्स और निफ्टी दोनों ही आज मामूली बढ़त के साथ बंद हुए बॉम्बे स्टॉक एक्सचेंज का सेंसेक्स इकसठ के आसपास पहुंच गया और निफ्टी 18,200 से ऊपर जाकर बंद हुआ वैश्विक शेयर बाजार के मिले जुले रुख के चलते घरेलू कारोबार में बढ़त दर्ज हुई सेंसेक्स एक अंक चढ़कर इकसठ पर बंद हुआ जबकि निफ्टी पैंतीस अंकों की बढ़त के साथ अठारह पर बंद हुआ व्यापक बाजार में बीएससी मेड कैप सूचकांक में शून्य दशमलव दो दो फीसदी और स्मॉल कैप सूचकांक में शून्य दशमलव एक आठ प्रतिशत की बढ़त दर्ज की गई। द सेंसेक्स एंड द एनएसई निफ्टी टुडे विटनेस्ड मॉडेस्ट गेन्स द इंडेक्स ऑफ टॉप थर्टी कंपनीज एट द बॉम्बे स्टॉक एक्सचेंज सेंसेक्स Ended near the 61,300 level, the Nifty index of top 50 companies at the National Stock Exchange closed above the 18,200 mark. Both indices added amid mixed cues from global share markets. The Sensex rose 126 points to settle at 61,294. The Nifty also added 35 points to finish at 18,233. In the broader market at the BSC, the mid-cap index rose 0.22%. While the small cap index added 0.18%. In the Sensex pack, 18 companies posted gains while 12 logged losses. Axis Bank was the top gainer as it added 2.3%, followed by Titan, which gained 1.9%. TCS rose 1.5%, and Tech Mahindra added 1.4%. On the other hand, Mahindra and Mahindra declined 1.1%. Reliance, Hindustan Unilever, and Tata Steel fell 0.7% each. In sectoral indices at the BSE, 16 sectors logged gains while 4 declined. Consumer durables climbed 1.6% and the healthcare sector index rose 0.7% while Bank X and Financial Services both added 0.6%. On the other hand, the metal sector fell 0.6% while Auto and FMCG slipped 0.4% each. The overall breadth of the BSC trade was positive as shares of 2,032 companies gained while 1,491 fell. Shares of 142 companies remained unchanged. Udian, uh, good beginning to 2023 and I think somewhere a little change as we have earlier been seeing it in uh, previous years. You know, December it would fall, January takes some time to pick up and do you think the pattern of how uh, foreign investments are coming in, the domestic stock market people, we're investing. You think there's a shift now? 
Yeah, the things are off to a good start. Uh, and uh, I think the markets will be waiting for queues, global queues, which uh, weren't really there. And uh, it's expected the uh, the futures, as far as Dow futures, etc. They're they're looking uh, slightly positive, if I if I may add. And we probably will expect a, a positive uh, sort of opening in the U.S. markets. Uh, um, and of course, the uh, um, the the headlines coming out of in the uh, last two days have been fairly positive and you would have seen as as you uh, mentioned in the headlines uh, um, uh, uh, people uh, investors are enthused by bank banks uh, even the smaller banks and uh, the lot of clean up that has happened in the bank financials are beginning to show and of course <coughs> uh, um, as far as global queues are concerned, a key uh, development would be the Fed minutes, the uh, uh, U.S. Federal Reserve minutes of the last meeting. People would be trying to take a cue from that and try to anticipate how much of a rate hike will happen uh, in the Federal Reserve uh, February meeting. And that is a, a pretty key uh, development that uh, will probably pan out in the next 36 odd hours. Right. Also wanting to uh, understand from you yeah. that, you know, at uh, at one level we see that uh, the market is coming back to the previous, uh, before it really, really corrected those levels. But the shares that are coming up are different now. The profile is completely changing. And people said that if you stay invested long term, finally it will even out. Do you think that will happen? Is there a tectonic shift in the profile of the shares which now for the next 10 years are going to go up? Yeah, that profile will change. There's no doubt about it because there are a whole new uh, sort of industry, um, shall we say, companies. The business models are different. Food delivery, ride hailing, uh, online uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, cosmetics and so on and so forth. So you'll have more and more of these guys who started their business, say, eight, nine, ten years back and they were privately funded or invested uh, into uh, they have stood the uh, uh, time, and they are now looking at IPOs. So that uh, that uh, uh, that diversity that you see, say in a uh, in China or Chinese listed companies, or in US and uh, um, say in, uh, European companies, that you will start seeing here. Uh, uh, you mentioned the profile. Of course, uh, people are not that gung ho. Uh, at the moment, I'm talking, it's very topical at the moment, uh, as far as FMCG is concerned. And uh, that's understandable because uh, if you're not uh, feeling the pressure, say you're not get, getting to see, uh, uh, anticipate any difficulties in oil supply uh, or uh, uh, any other inflation sort of moderating, but you know, you're not expecting it to go through the roof. So all those things where, which actually make you feel uncertain, when you start getting a little more certainty, then you start feeling, you know, when you're feeling confident, a little more right. confident, you then venture out to start taking risks. So it is that if the headlines change, as we have seen, it, it doesn't take time, uh, then uh, things do reverse. But uh, the good part is uh, right now all the headlines, uh, mostly the headlines for, as far as we are concerned, are pretty okay. Right. So just talking about the profile of companies, we're seeing that, uh, you know, entrepreneurially, we are actually more and more uh, people are coming out, starting their own ventures. Uh, people are going public more often than earlier used to be. Do you think that the rigor and the process in seeing how companies, because once it becomes uh, in the public domain, then we automatically understand there has been a rigorous process behind it. Do you think that needs to increase? That will. Uh, and that will and see even regulations and uh, um, public in the public conversations you start learning and you start learning and you try to understand how it works you'll start comparing with similar companies abroad you'll see how it is different um, so uh, let's I have to take the name so uh, let's take the name name of Amazon now when it came and it really flew on the face of the way people looked at companies. You know, you don't you don't expect a company to be well. Let's say that not in the black in the in the regular traditional sense for that long, and you don't expect revenues and you know profitability to be that far into the future. But now people are uh, have understood that some of these businesses take time, 
some of these businesses businesses shouldn't be taking time so it depends on the kind of investors you ha- you have and there's a whole diversity of investors there's no there's no one way of uh, creating wealth or making money from the markets people have understood it and our uh, the good news is our indian investors are also getting smarter uh the new gen investors who have come in in the last two years they are uh, you know taking full advantage of online resources they're investing online so that's helping them quite a bit and it's also helping us because it's a whole uh, uh, army a legion of investors who have come in so we are not actually dependent on the sentiments of foreign uh, institutional investors and we can there there's a strong counterbalancing force so somebody catches cold in new york doesn't mean that we're going to feel the उदयन अभी आपने जिक्र किया कि इंडियन इन्वेस्टर्स कुछ ज्यादा स्मार्ट हो गए पहले के मुकाबले अब इन्वेस्ट करना भी लोगों के लिए थोड़ा सा इजी भी हो गया है और ऐसे समय में जब यूएस यूरोप और चाइनीज इकोनॉमी की हम बात करते तो मंदी के दौर में है वहां पर जो इन्वेस्ट करने वाला भारतीय व्यक्ति है वो किस तरह से मतलब सोचता है कि अगर हम इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं स्मार्टली कर रहे हैं तो कहीं ना कहीं ये भी है कि भारतीय मार्केट को बचाने में इंडियन इन्वेस्टर्स का ये स्मार्टनेस योगदान देता है बिल्कुल देता है और जैसे कि हम देखते आ, 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 आ रहे हैं ये पिछले साल का डेवलपमेंट नहीं है कि खास कर सात आठ साल से चल रहा है आ, तो आप पाएंगे कि सिस्टमेटिक इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लान्स जो है म्यूचुअल फंड्स में और इंश्योरेंस कंपनी जो आपको निवेश के साथ प्रोटेक्शन देती है सुरक्षा देती है तो ये जो ये फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट्स जो हैं ये लॉन्ग टर्म है जैसे एक बीमा पॉलिसी है वो एक दो साल की नहीं होती ये दस पंद्रह बीस पच्चीस साल की होती हैं म्यूचुअल फंड्स में भी जो निवेश हो रहा है जो एक्विटीज के बारे में बात हो रही है वहां पे भी लोग थोड़ा सा उनका होराइजन बढ़ता चला गया है और इससे क्या होता है कि अगर मान लीजिए एक ग्लोबल पोर्टफोलियो मैनेजर उसको लगता है कि किसी और मार्केट में जाना है यहां पर हमारे तो वहां से उन्होंने पैसे अगर खींच लेते हैं तो हमारे यहां से जो कॉन्स्टेंट सप्लाई है वो भी बना रहता है और ये ये भी बताते चले कि कई ऐसे संस्थान हैं जहां पे निवेश का एक हिस्सा वो मार्केट्स में जा रहा है जैसे आपके प्रोविडेंट फंड का एक छोटा सा हिस्सा वो एक्सचेंज ट्रेडेड फंड्स में निवेश होता है तो उससे इससे भी जो एक काउंटर बैलेंसिंग फोर्स है वो वो जा रहा है और अच्छी बात अगर आप पर्सनली मुझसे पूछें व्यक्तिगत राय मेरी यह है कि भारत के जो भारत की जो तरक्की है आर्थिक प्रगति है उसका 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 सबसे ज्यादा फायदा आपको भारत के स्टॉक मार्केट से मिलेगा शेयर बाजार से मिलेगा उसका जो पहले जो हिस्सा हिस्सेदारी थी वो ज्यादातर विदेशियों के पास जा रही थी बिल्कुल एक आम भारतीय नागरिक के नागरिक के पास वो फायदे मिले और उनको वो विकल्प मिले ये 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 एक बहुत बड़ी चेष्टा एक बहुत बड़ा एंडेवर होना चाहिए जो काफी उस तरफ तरक्की होते हुए जो हम देख रहे हैं ये हमारे लिए बहुत बड़ी उपलब्धि है और इसको आगे लेते जाना है यानी इसमें हम ये कह सकते हैं कि इंडियन इन्वेस्टर्स की जो रिस्क कैपेसिटी है पहले के मुकाबले कहीं बढ़ चुकी है अगर बीते दौर की हम बात करते हैं तो ज्यादातर लोग आईटी सेक्टर से जुड़े हुए जो या फिर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग से जुड़े जो सेक्टर्स थे उन्हीं में इन्वेस्ट करते थे लेकिन आज का अगर हम देखते हैं तो लोगों के प्रोफाइल में तरह तरह की चीजें में नजर आती है तो कहीं ना कहीं दिखाता है कि फैक्टर बढ़ रहा है रिस्क फैक्टर जो है लोग अपना बढ़ा रहे हैं कैपेसिटी बढ़ा रहे हैं देखिए वो लो इन्फॉर्मेशन आप सबसे ज्यादा जो हमारे एम्पावर सशक्त सशक्तिकरण एम्पावरमेंट जो हुआ है वो बेसिकली आपके मोबाइल फोन से हुआ है स्मार्टफोन से हुआ है जो इतना सारा डेटा हम सुबह सुबह सबको हम गुड मॉर्निंग विश करते हैं सुप्रभात बोलते हैं उसके अलावा भी इन्फॉर्मेशन का जो एक जरिया बनता चला जा रहा है और आप सिर्फ एक आ, सीखने में आ, एक तो इन्फॉर्मेशन का सोर्स है जो इजीली अवेलेबल है जो संस्थान है वो आपको जानकारी दे रहे हैं पर हम आपस में जो कम्युनिकेट करते हैं उस मिस इन्फॉर्मेशन और फेक न्यूज तो का खतरा तो बना रहता है पर आ, लोग सीखते हैं आ, हम आ, एक दूसरे के जो एक्सपीरियंसेस हैं तजुर्बे से हम सीखते हैं और आ, वो आ, शायद कहीं ना कहीं लग रहा है आ, अब ये देखना है कि अगर हम हमारे मार्केट्स में कोई अगर एक टेस्टिंग डाउन टर्न आ जाता है तो ये जो नए निवेशक हैं वो टिके रहते हैं कि नहीं पर जब आप सिस्टमेटिक इन्वेस्ट सिस्टमेटिकली इन्वेस्ट कर बहुत सारा पैसा उठा के नहीं डालते हैं तो आ, वो डिसिप्लिन जो है जो डिसिप्लिन आप वर्जिश में एक्सरसाइज में 
आपके डाइट में रखते हैं डिसिप्लिन वो इन्वेस्टिंग में भी बना रहता है उसके फायदे आपको लॉन्ग टर्म में मिलते हैं I think uh, when we talk of a democracy uh, Odian we always believe that one of the biggest breach or uh, the non fulfilling of a right is, a, is an opportunity <laughs> and I think you spoke of the mobile phone at least everybody gets that opportunity to do it and due diligence will also come in but I think making it more level as a playing field is a huge factor in equity Absolutely absolutely and uh, uh, let's look at it this way there's a uh, there's a share of a uh, terrific company which is doing well for a uh, a person who's doing a 9 to 5 uh, he he may or may not have that capacity to buy even two or three shares but when you are going through a a, a different product say a, a, whether it's a nps kind of a product or a national pension uh, 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 scheme kind of a product right. or mutual fund what's happening is you you are taking that small share along with millions of other investors so all of uh, investors are getting together and all of them are being able to get that their share of india's progress so uh, when we look at all this before uh, it's not it wasn't long back when people used to say that it's all about uh, buying land and you know uh, property and gold we have uh, traveled a decent dis- yeah. distance but this is lots to uh, uh, um travel yeah yes yeah. absolutely yeah. We move on to our uh, story for today. Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed delight as the country's digital payments have achieved a new milestone by doing 782 crore unified payments interface UPI transactions in December 2022. The country did a total of 12.8 lakh crore rupees transactions through UPI mode in the last month. In his message the Prime Minister also lauded fellow Indians for embracing digital payments. and he appreciated the indians for showing remarkable adaptability to tech and innovation so then the upi interface in fact globally is also being touted as highly successful not only the number of transactions but also the cost of transactions i think uh, in other countries it's very high and over here to make it affordable to the common man and it succeeded your views yeah and uh, we actually are uh, uh I mean it's a given uh, now we, we take it for granted uh, it's entered so much uh, it's such a big part of our lives and uh, uh, the the two years in between that uh, the whole country suffered uh, it actually gave philip true uh, what would have probably happened in many years uh, we actually uh, covered that distance we leapfrogged shall we say during that period but there's one small uh, 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 aspect i would like to point out here Uh, given our demographic profile that we have uh, ad- uh, because we are still uh, more youth uh, uh, dominated shall we say composition is highly uh, um, uh, youth uh, uh, oriented right therefore adoption of any new technology would be that much easier so it is where it's a sweet spot it's a purple patch when you have people as young as you have in india uh they are adopting technology uh, technology with its payment technology or any technology it is so much easier and therefore uh this is the time for us to you know drive home this advantage and you would have seen uh, uh, uh in uh, you look around you people who were born around say 2005 2006 and people who were born 10 years earlier and then people who were born 10 even 10 years earlier say in the 80s their way of you know handling uh, uh, a different small, world absolutely yeah, absolutely so they this uh, this population which is now uh, roughly uh, going to hit about 20 or maybe a little more than that they are will be at the forefront of driving uh, some of these transformation that will happen and they luckily they are the largest chunk of population so we are not going to be complaining i mean there is a lo- you talk to other people who analyze us especially from abroad and they'll drop a long list of things that we need to do and uh, it's not as bright look at this and how many times uh, these things are pointed out so you would see that that some, uh, they cannot think of anything else they will not think of uh, having a fat wallet but they will uh, look at having the right app in their phone so yeah. the phone has to be empowered they must have a mobile application which empowers them to uh, 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 conduct that activity so uh, 
that's advantage india actually so what's interesting is that you know we've always been looking at demographic dividend as something as an hr profile yeah. train them well but here we're looking at this dividend as a multiplier you know the way oh, absolutely spread. absolutely so uh, the the amount of time see uh, digital anything any digital payments since we're talking payments it's instantaneous yeah and uh, you you save the time even walking to a, a, a cash vending machine or to the bank and there's so much happens which happens instantaneously and it's become an entitlement you know it's absolutely. not available you say why can't i do it absolutely and uh, think of young entrepreneurs people who are who want to do uh, start their own business or want to do a hybrid form of things these things save you that time that every time you try to do something so paper the error the fraud or uh, security all those issues they start going see one of the things about our uh, financial payment system is just how much smarter and how much more secure it has become uh, i think we will compare very very well with some of the best payment systems in the world uh, i mean the uh, the many factor authentication and uh, things that are being uh, uh, that have been put in place recently by rbi you start comparing it to others they are still behind us so uh, the good part is these are these are things that are that will make you feel happy make you feel positive and uh, as i said uh, we are not complaining मुझे एक किस्सा याद आ गया जल्दी से बता देता हूँ किसी व्यक्ति से मैं मिला उन्होंने बताया कि पांच छह साल पहले जब मैं विदेश में था तो एकमात्र ऐसा व्यक्ति मैं ऐसा था जो कैश में पेमेंट कर रहा था बाकी सारे कार्ड या ऐप से पेमेंट कर रहे थे जब मैं इंडिया लौट करके आया तो मैंने देखा कि एक मैं ही व्यक्ति था जो मतलब कैश में पेमेंट कर रहा था बाकी सारे कार्ड से पेमेंट कर रहे थे सीनेरियो कितनी जल्दी चेंज हुआ पांच से सात साल के अंदर तो हम ये मान सकते कि भारत ने बहुत ही जल्दी एक लंबा रास्ता तय किया है बिल्कुल 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 और जैसे कि मैंने बताया आपको कि मुझे ऐसा लगता है ये मेरे व्यक्तिगत राय है कि पिछले दो साल में जो कठिन परिस्थितियां रही थी जहां पे कॉन्टैक्टलेस रिमोटली हमें करना पड़ रहा था उसमें अडॉप्शन बहुत ज्यादा रहा और क्योंकि लोगों को दिक्कतें आ रही थी चैलेंज बन रहा था तो सारे जहां पे भी भुगतान आपको करना है जहां पर आपको रिसीव करना है पैसे वहां पर उस उस चीज को इनेबल किया गया चाहे वो आपको प्रीमियम भरना हो चाहे आपको निवेश करना हो कि, किसी यूटिलिटी में पेमेंट करनी हो तो आज आपको अगर कोई आ, कहता है कि आ, आ, आप आ, आपको किसी आ, सेवा के लिए भुगतान करना है तो वो आपको छह सात आठ दस कंफ्यूजिंग uh, हो जाता है कि आपको इतने सारे जो विकल्प दिए जा रहे हैं तो ये आपके लिए एक एक एम्पावरमेंट है जिससे आप इनेबल हो रहे हैं और दूसरी बात यह है कि आप ये सारे सिक्योर हैं जी जो इस तरीके से किया जा रहा है क्योंकि जितने आप डिजिटल पेमेंट्स करेंगे वहां पे सिक्योरिटी का मुद्दा और भी जाता जा रहा है और अगला अगला पड़ाव जो मेरे हिसाब से है वो हमारे इंटरनेशनल पेमेंट्स हैं वो हैं क्योंकि हमारे भारत के आपको जैसे जानते हैं रेमिटेंस बहुत जबरदस्त शायद नंबर वन है हम विश्व में जी जो इनवर्ड रेमिटेंस आता है तो ये जो है यहां से पैसे देने हैं यहां पे छात्र भी पढ़ते हैं तो हमारे बहुत कई लाख छात्र पढ़ते हैं विदेश में तो जो मूवमेंट क्रॉस बॉर्डर पेमेंट्स हैं वो हमारा अगला पड़ाव होगा जहां पर हम उसको सिक्योरली स्मार्टली ग्लोबली अलाइंड तरीके से हम उसको करेंगे और मुझे लगता है ये भी जो फासला है वो बहुत जल्दी तय होगा इसमें एक चीज मैं यहां पर और जोड़ना चाहूंगा कि देश में जो स्टार्टअप को बूम दिया जा रहा है जो बढ़ावा दिया जा रहा है उसका भी कहीं ना कहीं एक बड़ा योगदान है इसमें जी बिल्कुल और अब एशियाई बाजारों की ओर बढ़ लेते हैं तो वैश्विक शेयर बाजारों में आज मिला जुला रुख देखा गया चीन का शंघाई कंपोजिट सूचकांक शून्य दशमलव नौ प्रतिशत और हांगकांग का हेंग सिंह सूचकांक शून्य दशमलव तीन प्रतिशत ऊपर आ गया वहीं दूसरी तरफ सिंगापुर का स्टेट टाइम सूचकांक शून्य दशमलव दो प्रतिशत नीचे आ गया और दक्षिण कोरिया का कॉस भी शून्य दशमलव तीन प्रतिशत की सुस्ती में रहा जापान का निकई सूचकांक आज अवकाश के कारण बंद रहा यूरोपीय शेयर बाजार की बात करें तो अंतरदिवसीय कारोबार में यहां बढ़त का रुख था लंदन का फुट सी हंड्रेड के फायदे में चल रहा था जर्मनी का डेक्स एक दशमलव तीन प्रतिशत ऊपर आ गया और फ्रांस का कैक एक दशमलव एक प्रतिशत की वृद्धि के साथ कारोबार कर रहा था A look at the oil prices. Oil prices today fell around one and a half percent as investors expected lower demand amid weak manufacturing activity survey from China. 
a warning from the head of the International Monetary Fund that the global economy will face a tough year ahead also dampened investor sentiment. In intraday trade, Brent crude was trading at $84.65 per barrel, while WTI crude prices were at $79.05 per barrel. Oh, there's a question on the oil prices. I think somewhere now, because uh, the Ukraine and China Russia conflict has been prolonged and has been carrying on, and you think these prices have been built in, and any fall will be uh, plus plus, but even this continuing will not negatively impact trade. Yeah, um, um, the initial shock uh, has been uh, people obviously will start adjusting to it. Uh, in some uh, some manufacturing and other economic activities, the you, uh, the cycles are not that long. In the other cases, the cycles are longer. Okay. So it's, if 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 it takes you a year to produce something, then it will take you a year to adjust, or maybe a little more. Uh, um, um, far more uh, number of months to adjust in cycles which are short fast moving products that you uh, produce there you adjust quicker so uh, some of them uh, so in terms of the market markets will obviously would have uh, figured that out and they t tend to be uh, a leading indi indicator so they have it's not they're not looking behind they're anticipating the future so they are making an estimate that okay this is how these companies are going to earn and uh, the market as a whole is going to how it's going to earn so uh, that's number one. Having said that, um, a lot of uh, 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 there are a very significant uh, section of uh, international analysts who think that the oil prices might just move up a little bit, not uh, too much, but little bit. Say maybe move at uh, around say about ninety odd dollars. It okay. could go up to that much. Mm -hmm. But nobody is now forecasting. Uh, doomsday kind of numbers, you know, 135, 140, so some people were talking. So uh, those things are not looking like. And uh, so that that conflict and uh, 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 that because of that conflict, all the impact, uh, some of the things that happened because of the uh, oil price being fixed, so-called being fixed by some countries, those things have got factored in. Uh, now the now the whole interplay is going to be how economic activity is going to happen, and mostly uh, people, uh, uh, the markets, I, I would imagine, would get influenced by the news that's coming out of China. So there's this whole there's one section of international uh, investors and uh, analysts who are, who, are, who, th who are very bullish about what they're calling as reopening of China. They're they're saying that okay the uh, infections are peaking and have, they have peaked and uh, there will be far more activity and well there are there are, there are others uh, who think that uh, it's going to be a moderated kind of economic performance that's going to happen right. so uh, the question is which one you, you don't know the as 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 it, as it is true with other econ economies as well uh, people are not exactly clear where, where how the trajectory will happen but that actually will determine because it is the ma manufacturing hub of the world, is the factory of the world. So, depending on how they demand, if they really uh, get out the blocks and you know uh, set you know uh, get off on a scorching uh, pace, then uh, the oil prices will see a, a upward move. But if it remains subdued, as other people estimate, then it, this is the range somewhere between 80, 85, 90, and, and you know the uh, producers will probably play around with the supply to make it sure that it's there. We would obviously love it to be much, much lower than this, uh, and we would like. Uh, obviously, the new budget will uh, uh, make certain assumptions, and they have already been making some assumptions. RBI has been doing it, so they'll make some more. Uh, um, uh, different kind of assumptions and they'll come up with numbers. और अब सोने पर नजर डालते हैं मल्टी कमोडिटी एक्सचेंज में फरवरी के वायदा कारोबार में सोना चार सौ रुपए महंगा होकर पचपन हजार पांच सौ अस्सी रुपए प्रति दस ग्राम पर था मार्च अनुबंध वाली चांदी भी एक हजार दो सौ रुपए की बढ़त के साथ सत्तर हजार सात सौ सत्तर रुपए प्रति किलो पर थी उधर न्यूयॉर्क मर्केंटाइल एक्सचेंज में सोना वृद्धि के साथ एक हजार आठ सौ चौवालीस डॉलर साठ सेंट प्रति औंस पर था हालांकि चांदी बढ़त दर्ज करती हुई चौबीस डॉलर साठ सेंट प्रति औंस के स्तर पर थी so i think uh, somewhere when we look at uh, prices and uh, the moderation and the sheer unpredictability we also know that uh, you know you really can't predict it let's get less reactive and i think that's what's happening thank you dian for coming on to our show before we close a reminder of the headlines domestic stocks witness modest gains amid mixed global queues 
Sensex finishes near 61,300 points. Gold rises above 55,500 55, rupees per 10 gram mark for February contracts. Silver, 70,700 per kg level for March contracts. And Brent crude slips below $85 per barrel amid lower demand prospects. And that's it in this edition. Namaskar. Namaskar. Market Buzz.